This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. kids doing up here in the attic? Comedy at one off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nitch. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, we used to use the old TV set. No satellite hookups or anything. Just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some are even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Our show's been really boring. There weren't even any interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what's, what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comnet, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation! <laughs> Come back with us to the '60s and '70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded informed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Smidbar, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And tonight, it's Variety Show! Hey, all da -da 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 right! But before we get into Variety Shows, just want to tell you we're on uh, Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. And if you want to write to us, and boy, those letters just been rolling in, uh, write to Box 151526, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Yeah, keep writing. Oh, yeah. Don't hide the name, right? Yeah, we're <laughs> We'll start having a viewer mail segment just any week now. So, anyways, on to variety shows. Certainly one of the, uh, the, one of the big things, uh, one of the first things on television because they were just really cheap to do. You just basically got any out of work uh, vaudevillian or uh, Catskill type comic and and just got, yeah that's about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much no budget. Let's but, have a show. <laughs> but uh, and of course uh, you some of the the younger uh, uh, Catskill comics went on to be uh, went on to be the the big 50s stars like uh, Milton Berle and people like them but Really, you have to get into the 60s for the golden era of, um, of the variety show. <laughs> <laughs> well, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> huh. And so we just want to just go into that. Uh, what do we got here, Wilbert? Well, by golly, I 
didn't do the the massive amounts of um, research that that, that you, that you did, did, sir. But yes. um, the the first, probably the first one that I really remember. Well, there were two actually. I'd had to go with um, Jackie Gleason, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jackie Gleason, and and everybody's favorite Ed Sullivan. Right. And of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. this one. Right, well. Well, that's true, but I'm, I'm going kind of like in weekend order here. It's like you got Jackie on Saturday, you got Ed on Sunday, and then so Red, Red Skelton wasn't on until Tuesday, so, right. you know, it's like... So uh, oh, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eddie. He's a little bit, a little Italian mouse. That, that was Italian exactly mouse, it. Yeah. I think Ed Sullivan gave us Give me a big kiss, exposure Eddie. for the Muppets. Yes, he did. The right. Good Muppets that blew up and yes. were violent. <laughs> they did things. They Before were. they were the cute Muppets. Right. <laughs> there was one I remember, the glutton. The glutton that would just eat everything and eat everything and <laughs> eat everything. Then there'd more food come out. He'd eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and he kept getting bigger and bigger. He'd keep eating and eating. And then there's this little nut, little walnut, had eyes in it that would glow like the twaddle lights. <laughs> it's like... It's a little walnut, and he ate it, and it shrank him down. He got tiny, tiny, tiny. Then another glutton came out, and he just started eating and eating, and a little, little glutton was there, and he just ate him up. And he <laughs> just eating. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. Well, that's just one of many, well, many Muppets shows. I watched, yeah. watched his film for the Muppets, but Topo Gijo. I mean, hey, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, who were oh, they? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> they were the Muppets. That's right. <laughs> they were right. Just a, <laughs> And I watched for the circus acts, the too. Dog acts, yeah. Yeah. The circus acts, hey. And the, um, the Marquee Chimp. Was it Marquee? Well, certain, a certain group of chimps, because they did ice capades, too. Yeah. So it was like, Ooh. We're going to see TV stars, the ice capades. We're going to see the skating chimps. Ooh, all right. <laughs> they were the marquee chimps. Well, something like, well, let's, I don't, something they, like that. they might even say here. And, and the trick dog. Mm -hmm. And the plate spin. Plate axe. Guys. The plate axe. Da 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 and everybody Somebody just, thought that was they just wow. love the saber dance, you know, the yeah. saber dance. That's just the best music to do anything to. <laughs> I thought it was the plate spinner music. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the same. No, dance. also it's the plate spinner music. <laughs> but the uh, Taylor I, dancers were out there. Yeah, well, yeah. Ever, everybody was on Ed Sullivan pretty much. I mean, you, uh, well, <laughs> rather than us. If Ed Sullivan was on today, we'd be on it. <laughs> no, who didn't do that? Um, the Jackie Gleason had to do like, the Tom Hansen dancer or something we like did. that? We did. It'd be gross. No. Oh. Well, maybe I know. I thought I thought he also had June Taylor. Well, did he have June Taylor? Oh yeah. Hey, June got around. Hey, June, June. <laughs> you got around. <laughs> Dancing on every <laughs> show on TV. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, but, but you see that uh, that Ed Sullivan was like uh, really had absolutely no talent other than the fact that he could really pick acts that America loved. Shoot. He had big shoes. Really, had some really <laughs> big shoes. <laughs> so, um... But isn't it strange that, like, I don't really remember the Beatles being on there. Or the Rolling Stones. Well, I don't. I know I don't. <laughs> or Elvis, even. Well, hey, I, I, saw, about one I saw the night that the I saw the night that the Beatles were on. You I'm know, sure like... I saw it, but that's not what sticks in my head. What sticks in my head from Ed Sullivan is that Ed Sullivan was a very ugly little ape-looking guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. a, a big, kid. a big one. He was a well, big, ugly guy. He had guy. a small TV. In okay. well, so he looked small. So okay. Everybody looked small. Everything looked little. <laughs> and no, by golly, they, Jackie Gleason did have those June Taylor. Oh, I, yeah, I thought he did. I you, okay. Yeah. Around. Well, then the Tom Hanson, they must have been on Jack, um, um, Red Skelton then. Oh, yeah, I would assume. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I like Red Skelton, too. I don't mm -hmm. remember guests on his show. I don't really there remember weren't, any. <laughs> there weren't any. They were mostly regulars. Him mm -hmm. and, um, him. Gertrude <laughs> and Heathcliff. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and Freddie the Freeloader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who always remind me of the town clown. And the mean little Memphis. kid. <laughs> and the mean little kid. And the characters he did. No, those were called characters. And that was about him, yeah. Was, I mean, yeah and other ones. ones. And a host of others. <laughs> and a host of others. But, it was uh, neat. I, thought I liked it. It. it was it was like being told a story. I was a little sad that they, uh, that uh, someone did a, I think Spy Magazine did a poll last year where they, they said, 
here are various celebrities, which ones are alive and which ones are dead, as far as you know. And they did a poll and they said something like 60% of the American populace thought Red Skelton was dead. Oh no, he's still on <laughs> yeah, TV he's, sometimes. Yeah, but 60%, like something like 60% of the American people thought <laughs> I mean, based oh, statistically on this red, information. Red, it's hard to get out there. Yeah, <laughs> red, do some more work. <laughs> Maybe a little less painting, a little bit more TV exposure. I don't know. Well, oh. goodbye. Hey, God bless. Wow, that's a trip. Yeah. Oh, Clem Cadiddle, did you mention Clem Cadiddle Hopper? No, I didn't. No. He was always one of my favorites. Because he'd walk around and he'd do that little walk thing, and they had a little, <laughs> little cowbell. And, yeah, by golly, I remember him. Well, in the 60s, you also got into the... Uh, some of the, where well, you got the, uh, the movie stars, the big movie stars from the, f from the 30s and 40s coming and doing variety shows. In the 50s. Uh, and well, yeah. And you had, uh, because really in the 50s you didn't see it because everyone was like, oh, TV, that, you know, the motion picture industry was like, that's scum, you know, they're, they're that competing with us. Those upstarts, get out of here, we don't want you yeah. around here. So, TV. but by the 60s they realized that the movie industry was starting to collapse at that point and they, right. I Got mean, they, their, the, their business was slowing down, and TV was picking up most of the most of the slack. But well, I mean, um, you know, they tried that 3D thing, and right. it just didn't go over. <laughs> so, so you had uh, there was a show, uh, Hollywood Palace, hey. and this was, and uh, Bing Crosby was the host. Boo and boo, just, boo 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 boo. <laughs> and we, we, it was like uh, most of the most of the shows back then, uh, if it didn't have a name attached to the name of the show, it was basically the. It was rotating hosts. And that Hollywood Palace was one of those. Oops, that's just like every morning. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's see. What did we have here? Uh, well, as you get into the uh, the mid '60s, you get more into shows. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brothers, brother. Well, that's yeah. Some yeah, going oh, to the later that '60s. That was one of the best ones. I remember that one. Mm -hmm. I used to. Watch that with my neighbor. It was that radical show. That radical show. They were and talking radical stuff. Remember Steve Martin on there playing the banjo? Mm-hmm. I can remember that. Rob Reiner was a was a writer for the show, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Rob Reiner, Steve Martin. Rob Reiner, I don't know about Rob Reiner. I believe that Rob Reiner was a Steve was a writer for the show. <coughs> we can look this up here. And, and, and um, Officer Judy, who's now yeah. Super Dave. On yeah, the yeah, Super Dave. <laughs> You know, I watched Super Day for a long time. I kept thinking, where do I know him from? I know this guy from something. And it's Officer Judy. And then it like came out on the new Smothers Brothers show or something like that. But yeah, and I remember really, uh, Pat Paulson. Yeah, Pat mm -hmm. Paulson was like my favorite on there. Yeah, <laughs> and do you remember when Pat Paulson and they did that itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini song, and he came out wearing the bikini. Well, I, I, don't I can't know say I, I remember that. that. I remember that for some strange reason. <laughs> well, it, I, hmm. I can see how that could be. Yeah, the image though. would really all burn into your consciousness. <laughs> yeah, if I would have seen it, I'd probably remember ah! that one too. There you go. Run away screaming from the set. <laughs> well, here's Mason Williams. Mason Williams, the guy that did classical, classical gas. gas. Yeah, that was like his big claim to fame there. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, well, no, no. John that, Hartford. John was, Hartford. Okay, wasn't Glenn Campbell on the show also? Yes, he yep. was at a point. They don't mention him here, but he, I know he oh, was yeah. on there. Oh, yeah. Because I can remember, it seems like I remember, I remember a row of men, and they were all playing a guitar or a banjo, and it seems like Steve Martin was one of them, and... John Hartford, John Hartford, John Hartford was Hartford, one yeah. of them, definitely. And it seems like Glenn Campbell was one of he them. He probably was, because he and John Hartford, they, they played a lot together. Well, they, John Hartford went on, didn't he go on with the Glenn Campbell show? Well, yeah, on? when the Glenn Campbell show came on, John Hartford was right there with him. Yeah. And here, look, Don Novello. <laughs> Ooh, early appearance by wow, Don Novello. Oh, that's right. Sally Struthers. The writers. Father Guido Sarducci. <laughs> Wasn't he one of the writers? Um, he could have been. Former. The regular, according to that, yeah, he was a regular on the 1975 wow. uh, reissue of the show that uh, didn't really work very well because it wasn't nearly, it wasn't topical at all. Yeah. Basically, uh, I mean, when the first show was out, they were just going, uh, you know, well, we want you want you to do like a hip, uh, you know, ta topical kind of show, but don't offend anybody <laughs> you know and, that, and that's the way the networks always think you know it's like well you know we always want it both ways you want something you know it's really out there but we want it to be exactly like everything else and homogenized but yeah don't so make people think to poke fun at virtually all the hollowed institutions of american society motherhood church politics government etc it was topical it was funny and occasionally it was in bad, bad taste, taste. <laughs> 
I remember, oh, but there's a scary thing down here. It says the Smothers Brothers were replaced by Hee Haw. <laughs> 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 well, but uh, yeah, the uh, Smothers Brothers show uh, kind of, in a, in a way, begat the uh, the Glenn Campbell show and the, uh, yeah. and the Jim and Stafford show. Yeah. And, I mean, oh, made a lot Jim of careers. Oh, Jim Stafford had that neat puppet, uh -huh. Rodney. Mm -hmm. They all just kind of sprang off neat. of each other there. Right. And then, but the yeah. same kind of format, the same background, actually. Yeah, had the, pretty much. The yeah. Sonny and Cher uh -huh. show, which had... Uh, which like um, See, now Cher the Cher a show, big movie. yeah, the Cher show came off of, it. and think, and the Sunny show. Think, think back of Cher doing a sexy Sadie the Vamp and all that, and now she's doing Moonstruck and Mermaids and and all this cool stuff. It's hard to <laughs> it was like when they split up there. Sunny, they did the Sunny show. Sun, Sunny had the funny stuff. Cher had all the singing and entertainment. Right. And Sunny was just the funny. Funny. <laughs> Sunny was funny, and then you have. Tony Orlando and, and Don. Don. And then hey. it was like, just Tony Orlando for a yeah. while. <laughs> and then they, they stopped the show altogether. I liked Tony Orlando and then there was, there Well, was, I'll confess, I had a huge crush on Tony Orlando. He was just <laughs> <laughs> there was There was, off of the Tony Orlando and Don show, just one of my favorite silly shows to think about, <laughs> Pink <laughs> Lady <laughs> and Jeff. <laughs> Now, for those who don't remember Pink Lady and Jeff, this was show was on about 1980, I believe, 7980. Well, it, was, it was right there in the yeah, late 70s. Yeah, and um, and this was a uh, one of the brilliant Fred Silverman concepts. <laughs> <laughs> the idea was there was this Japanese female singing du duo called Pink Lady, and they were a big hit in Japan. Yes. Nobody in the U.S. heard about it. And he said, "Great, I'll bring them over here to the U.S. and we'll pair them with this American comedian Jeff Altman, who you now see on Letterman and stuff," and uh, he at that time he was a much more conventional comedian. Just right. basically, uh, you know, I'm gonna be at the Sands, you know, I'll be uh, with Buddy Hackett or something, and and so you had this very conventional comedian and these two Japanese ladies who spoke who no English, English at all, <laughs> had no concept of the English language. So they they like tried to do banter between Jeff and these two women, with them giving all their lines phonetically. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> that, that was like, it was like the absolute absence of comic timing because they had no idea what they were saying. Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> well, hey, you know. So I said, take my wife, please. Hello, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. yeah. And then the other one, it's, it was like, it was like totally like Tony Orlando and Don too, right. because they were always there was always the, like the nice one, and then the one that was always cracking on him. Yeah. yeah. So there's like little hello, Jeff. That was the nice one. Then the other one. Oh, this is my. This is my. <laughs> Tama Hopkins, the uh, was yeah was the uh, was one of the members of Dawn, and she's gone on just she's in every sitcom every, now. She was she was the mean one on yeah on yeah. Tony Orlando. Right. She was the one that was always cracking but you know up. What? Tony Orlando and Dawn, when they recorded uh, Knock Three Times, was that their first or mm -hmm. was it Gypsy Rose? No, that was Gypsy Rose. Was well, after when, Knock when, Three when Times. they did mm -hmm. their first recordings. He did his part in California. They took it to Chicago or somewhere. Oh, we got some nice background singers here. Played them the tape. They sound. They didn't meet really until the song got popular and the idea from the show. But it worked out. You know, they just naturally right. they were performers. Mm -hmm. It worked out. They they were part of the the family of performers here in the in the industry. Yeah, unlike by the, the industry, I mean the business. Unlike the 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 <laughs> Millie Vanilli thing <laughs> now, where you have people that sing it. Totally away from. Them. Then you have people perform it. Yeah. Who don't? Who don't even sing, sing it. at all? Well, these two didn't In fact, sing it they together. don't even speak English really. <laughs> but it. That, but when they got together, it worked. <laughs> right. And it didn't. And the same idea didn't work with Pink Lady and No, Jeff, it, which it was. was just it was like an idea, but it. It, it was didn't, funny. It, it was like an idea. It was like right. Fred Silverman had some sake one yeah. night. Yeah. Japan! Yeah, Japan! Great idea. <laughs> I can see this. This this is the future. <laughs> Japan! <laughs> well, the, oh. same, the same man who brought us Super Train. But <laughs> anyway. Oh, well, uh, oh, well uh, you, you really can't have a, a talk about variety shows without mentioning Dino. Dino. Everybody loves had, somebody. I mean, sometimes. In, in addition to all the specials he did, uh, he also had four different uh, series. The Dean Martin Comedy World in 74, Dean Martin Presents in 68 to 73, Dean Martin Show from 65 to 74, 
and the D. Martin Summer Show from Summer 66 show. to 71. <laughs> Which one did and, he come out one day? And the Gold Diggers Show. <laughs> Is that the one where he came, I remember he came out, jumped on the piano and the piano. Yes. All the that last. was the D. Martin <laughs> Show. These shows are all interchangeable. That's the amazing thing about it. All these shows, it's like, they call them different things. I just think because people said, oh, we're bored with that show. Oh, okay, the, you know, the executive was sitting around. Oh, we'll rename it. Uh, pretty much do the exact same show, and that's all they did. And it was always, you know, Dean would sit there and drink and tell jokes, and, uh, <laughs> and Frank or Sammy had dropped by or, uh, you know, uh, whoever. And have Leonard Barr come out. Hi. I'm Leonard oh, Barr. <laughs> he was like, he could like easily be Gilbert Gottfried's godfather oh, or his grandfather no. or something. D d you know, I can't separate the Dean Martin show too much from the roasts. Oh yeah. Well, that's well, they were like the same people. They were, they were, they were, they were the same. They, they were in the same time period. It was like they would do maybe. Um, well, the roasts were on Friday night. Mm -hmm. well, that's right. But I just I don't know for some reason the Dean Martin show and the celebrity roast. So, just... I think what happened is they found... I think, they, I, based, I think it's my opinion is that they found out that Dean couldn't even... He was just... He came in so blotto that he even <laughs> couldn't handle simple sketches. So it's like, well, let's see. He can probably read off a cue card and he'll be the master of ceremonies. We'll only have him on a couple minutes and we'll put 10 or 11 other comedians around him so if he blows it, we can always just... And it's all on tape so we can edit it anyway. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, this is where... Um, Rodney Dangerfield really got his real big sure. start on yeah. the Dean Martin shows. I remember him a lot, and he still looked the same. I watched Carol Burnett more. <laughs> of course, she had her. She started out in some variety show before well, my Gary time. Moore. Gary, Gary Moore. Moore. Gary Moore, okay. Yeah. That's the, Moore. that's the cleaning woman, wasn't it? No. In various it? parts. Okay. Uh, I don't think there was... I don't think the cleaning woman showed up until no, her that, show. No, that was Carol Burnett, the, right. char, the char woman. Really? Mm -hmm. I could but almost... I almost think I saw her on other stuff. I don't know. Before that, and then it was like when she got her own show, it's like, well, by golly, she isn't really a cleaning woman. I was, <laughs> I was surprised. I was truly surprised. Because that I think that was how I first saw her on things. As, yeah, that, as that, as that charwoman there. And that was, she created a lot of characters. Sure. Yeah, she did. But I mean, she really had a real, it was like, skit, song, skit, song. Get right. It was a real, Final duet. Right. a real structured kind of thing, and from yeah. there you got the uh, little Carol Lawrence, Vicky Lawrence, mm -hmm. Vicky Lawrence. Vicky Vicky Lawrence. excuse me, Carol Lawrence, Vicky Carol Lawrence. Lawrence. Queen Who of the daytime Carol game Lawrence show. Was, I don't know. Anyway, you, you made it. Copy commercials. <laughs> okay, well, Vicky <laughs> Lawrence, who, who went on to do her own show <laughs> after a while. Oh, queen of the Queen of the daytime uh, game shows. She, yeah. I caught her last week on To Tell the Truth, which they brought back. Yeah. And uh, of course, that put together Harvey Corman and Tim Conway, who. Yeah. I think they're married. I don't know. Yeah, don't know. <laughs> they're still they're, in commercials they're together. They're joined at the they hip or something. Get each other. <laughs> really, that was the last, as far as I'm that concerned, like the, the, the last right great variety show. Carol I mean, Burnett? after that, okay. it was pretty yeah. much, you know, the, there was just the last few stragglers. That, but, see, see, in my opinion, I think the variety shows are going to make a comeback in the 90s. I'm convinced of this. No, no. But I know. No. See, the thing all is... The, all, the scary, see, the last, all the scary singing groups... <laughs> yeah. that, that, don't have any <laughs> records anymore, like <laughs> doing the same vipers. No, the people like the Silvers, yeah. the Silvers variety show. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or the or the Jets variety yeah. show. Jets. I mean the Jets could be their own variety yeah. show. No, There's so many worse. of them. The new kids on the, the block, block variety get show. One. They, well, that's pretty much what that, uh, what are that those new, the, the kids, new kids down, down, the down, kids down, down, down the street or, or whatever? The kids down the street on Saturday? The kids yeah. in the hall. No, not the kids in the hall. The kids? K kids? The kids next down door. Kids in your neighborhood. The guys next door. Guys yeah. next door. <laughs> whatever it is. Folks next door. <laughs> oh. People down the street. <laughs> kid clone guys. Kids from <laughs> yeah. down the block around the street, corner, corner up the street <laughs> back into yesterday. But see, <laughs> see the, the thing is, I mean, everyone's saying, everyone's saying that the variety shows Oh, they're never going to bring back variety shows. But around 1980, they said, oh, they're never going to do any more family sitcoms. They're dead. You know, no one's going to do any more of those. It's, it's, we've, we've, we've done it. It's all done. And then the Cosby show came, and everyone said, oh, well, I oh, guess we can do them again. Well, that's okay, and so, then. And what's <laughs> happening now is you're seeing shows like, um, like uh, Cop Rock is a good example. Oh, this is a, cool show that, show. this show. is a show that desperately cool wants show. to be a variety show. It, uh, but nobody wants to be the one to stick out their stick out their neck and say, "All right, I'm going to do a variety show, damn it." 
<laughs> Nobody wants to do it because the, because it's the closest the, thing we sort of have are the late night right the Letterman right. the Carson the Arsenio. Uh, <laughs> see what they what they really need to my favorite what they really need to find <laughs> is a is somebody like Carol Burnett who but see, she's, she and, is doing Carol and Company right now. oh yeah it's true but see what what they Just need to give it to her daughter that's yeah. what they should do. <laughs> Call it Carrie. <laughs> the Carrie Burnett. Carrie Burnett. Well, her name's not Burnett. It's, no, it's um, um, Hamilton. Hamilton. You're right. Just, just give it to her daughter. That's yeah. what they're doing in in the business anyway. You're so, whose kid? Okay, here, have a show. So you're whose kid here? You can be in the movie. You need <laughs> you got good genes. <laughs> you need to find somebody who, and this was the problem with shows like uh, the Dolly Parton variety show they tried in the mid '80s. You don't want somebody who does one thing really well. And a lot of stuff, not nearly as well. You want somebody who can't do anything incredibly well. Because well, you don't it. want them to show up the guest stars. Like, no you guest need star a wants jack to... of all trades Exactly. Kind of you want somebody who can do everything fairly well. Carry a tune, act in a skit, skit. introduce people. Exactly. Nobody wanted to go on and sing with Dolly Parton because she'd show them up every week. It's like that's true. And she and she writes her songs up in that. Right. That nobody Rains else can sing at. Like, you have to sing in my key. It's like, yeah. oh no. <laughs> you yeah. just plowed around down there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sing up here. <laughs> you just come in when you want. Yeah. You yeah, think you can. <laughs> so let's see. Um, but anyways, I think those are coming back. But so who uh, would you pick for a, to get a variety show? I don't know. I, well, I think it's going to be one of the, the, probably one of the pack of the current stand-up comedians that will get it. Hmm. One of the Let's hundreds. Let's give it to Jerry Elliott. <laughs> oh, the Jerry Elliott variety show. Jerry watch him cough up a big old oyster. Show. Yeah, you're watching this, Jerry. Cough up a big old oyster. Yeah, you watch it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, well, I, I wanted to go over a couple more shows before we get out of here. I um, wanted to mention that the ill-fated Mary Tyler Moore variety shows, two different shows, they tried the, the Mary show, which, which uh, the only footnote to this was the fact that this was one of David Letterman's first appearances on TV. Okay. <laughs> he was he was one of the uh, he was one of the regulars on the show, uh, and then there was uh, the Mary Tyler Moore Hour, which was kind of like half sitcom variety thing, and then they both well, died pretty well, much. Well, the only reason that she had one was because. Dick Van Dyke had had a, right. a variety tiny mm -hmm. show there after the Dick, Dick Van, Van Dyke Dyke's show. Dick Van Dyke's one of those people that doesn't really do anything outstanding. Well, he can dance. Yeah, he can dance but like I crazy mean, you know, because he's, he's got those... He's a likable person yeah. for one thing. He's a real warm kind of mm -hmm. likable person. Unlike his brother Jerry, who just becomes like a <laughs> crabby guy. His brother's kind of funny. <laughs> he just becomes like a crabby guy. He gets up there and he plays the banjo and he... He's, well, but, he can play the banjo and mm -hmm. he's... But it's I mean, like you know, it's like Dick got up there and sang and everybody liked him, and then yeah. Jerry, well, he gets all right. <laughs> He's okay. Yeah, yeah. This is your brother. You need somebody. <laughs> you need somebody who's got a personality that you can, you know, relate to. Mm -hmm. Sort of like I was going to grow up and be Cher. No. <laughs> oh, well. Pee Wee Herman. Let's somebody. see. <laughs> one one more trend that uh, they really got into as the variety shows kind of died was there were so many variety shows that they had to. Um, they had to differentiate them in the schedule by making weird names for the shows. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I had some ones down here like the Ken Berry Wow Show. Ken <laughs> Berry. <laughs> the uh, let me find another good one. The Late Summer Early Fall Bert Convy Show. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember that one. <laughs> I don't like Burt Convy. The Pat Paul Mark Gaddafi. <laughs> he doesn't do anything well. The Pat Paulson's Half a Comedy Hour. Half a Comedy Hour. But but I think. Hey, you know what? They do a Half a Comedy Hour on MTV. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh they do a Half, half Hour Comedy Hour. That's a bad idea. Mm. That's wow. what they call it. But, but hey. my my personal favorite, the Jerry Reed When You're Hot You're Hot Hour. Hey. <laughs> Wow. Plug <laughs> that hit song. When you're hot, you're hot. When you're and not, you're that not. was the theme for the I'll show. Yeah. So. And of course, that's one of the, you know, that's one of the big things in the, in the summer shows was, well, we only got like six or seven shows. And so we can basically center the whole thing around this hit that this guy has. And but, you know, before this song is gone off the charts, this show will be gone anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we do have something a little close to bringing back the varieties are these uh, talent kind of shows. There's one on Saturday afternoons, Natalie Cole hosts. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the store search. Those kind of things are sort of variety shows. Sort of. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, a lot I of people. I see where you're coming. A lot there. of people are Edge trying to do it, in. but nobody wants to see. One thing I want, just wanted to mention was that they had um, uh, Larry King this fall did a thing on NBC, a variety special. I didn't get to see it, but it was very much like exactly like a regular variety show. When I didn't hear anything else about it, I didn't know what the ratings did. We don't know, but but I think uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's it, it's time for the variety shows to come back. Well, you know, because they're, again, they're going to go back to them for exactly the same reason as they as they started with them because they're cheap, cheap. <laughs> and they need cheap now because they're competing with cable companies yeah. and and it's like you can't keep doing these Dallas and you know Dynasty shows. You need an hour show that doesn't cost you anything and makes big ratings, like America's Money's Home Videos, show like that. <laughs> and, you know, what I, what I was, when I kept doing this for because one of my, just real quickly, one of my favorite variety type shows was always The, the Gong Show. show. Yeah. Chuck, Chuck, e. Chuck Barris. Chuck Barris. <laughs> He'd get out there, okay, now we've got a thing to do here, buddy.